Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we talk about the upcoming 2024 Bourbon County Stout lineup. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Ryan Thompson, Tim Swyatt, and Kathy Cool. Hey, gang. What's up? Howdy. Hey, what's up? Hello. So yes, we're going to be talking about Bourbon County Stout. Seems early this year. It's, it's, uh, it's coming out the same time it always does. Comes out on Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. But uh, they've got the lineup set, and they're uh, we'll be able to talk about that. We'll get to it after the break. For right now, Ryan said there's something he wanted to talk about. What is that, sir? It's uh, three words, and I just want to see what kind of feelings arise once I say this, and then okay. we can go from there. High school reunions. Okay. All right. Tim, Tim, t- talk to us about high school reunions. What do you think about Don't those? go. Don't go. <laughs> I have a problem with it. Can't mm-hmm. get past it. Got to let things go and just do it and just be fine. But uh, at the moment, you realize when you go to those things, you're like, nah, who cares? They said, nobody cares. Just go and whatever. Do your thing. Uh, okay. But no, I do not attend at all. Okay. Don't, don't attend. attend. Don't attend. All right. Kathy, what do you think? I have attended three. And okay. what I will say is that the 10 year, it was everybody um, measuring up, like measuring each other up. By the time we went to the 20 year, it was just, hey, really good to see you. Let's have some fun. And by the time we went to our 30 year, it was, man, isn't it nice? to get together with people that you knew so long ago and have such a great time because the older you get, the less shits you have to give about who's doing what and how many kids and what their job is. And you're just happy to sit around and talk to people that you had something in common with. So you may have missed out on something there, Mr. Swyatt. Hmm. What everything Kathy just said sounds horrific to me. I have no interest in seeing uh, anybody from my high school. Uh, The ones that I see, I I, I continue to see. And uh, if I bump into someone from high school uh, randomly at a place, and that does happen, especially when you have a shop, some some of those folks have come out and come to the shop. And that's nice to to visit with them. But on a large scale, seeing a bunch of people I don't know, uh, didn't like back in 1986 when I graduated, uh, I have no interest at all in seeing them. And I will never go to one of those ever. No, no interest, <laughs> zero interest. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Ryan? You go to those things? Uh, no, I asked because my my uh, thirty year is uh, right around the corner, and I got the invite recently, and I uh, talked to a couple of my other buddies. I, I still I'm still friends with some guys from elementary school. So, yeah. let alone junior high and high school. And I asked them, like, you guys going to like, no, we're not going. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to make the effort either. Uh, I did go to my 10 year. I missed my 20 year. My 10 year was fun. We had a good time with it. Um, but no, I don't, I don't have any, any interest in going <laughs> much these days. I think before social, you know, it might have been a thing if, um, but now if there's, if you, if That's you miss true. someone, you, you want to see what's going yeah. on, just 
so you can kind of keep up on social that's for sure so that's that's an interesting uh aspect of that yeah for sure and uh, i'm not on socials personally which is nice so i don't, really don't that's true that's true becca how about you um i think it really depends on um like i graduated from a class of i think there were 17 of us mm -hmm. um and i got along like really like all of us got along really well i mean there's 17 of us that's like a small friend like friend group really um so like we all got along great i went to my 10-year class reunion and it was it was great because pretty much everyone was doing really well and it was just like fun to talk to everyone there wasn't really like uh i guess anyone that wasn't doing that great really didn't show up <laughs> right. um but it was just kind of like cool to see like all these people that like i grew up with like doing cool things and um being accomplished at what they were doing uh -huh. um and so i plan like i guess it'll be in a few more years here we'll have our 20-year class reunion and i plan on going to it um although this time it's gonna be a little bit different because there's been some things that have happened to a few people we went to school with so that should be interesting i guess but i think it depends like i think if i went to a huge school i don't think i'd be as into going to it because there, it's just like i don't know I, I think it'd be i don't know maybe not as fun um but having a small class I think it's I think it's fun to do, and I, I liked what Kathy said that it was like first like people like measuring up to each other, and then it was just kind of like chilling out. And like I mean, if you don't if you didn't have a bunch of friends in high school, then it's not going to be very fun. But right. even if you had some friends, and this is the first time you actually kind of get to get together, then you can like go there and just like make fun of everybody else, which is always fun. You never grow out of that, right? You know. Yeah, I just wasn't I more people in our individual classes than you did in your entire class. Like I graduated, right. graduated with six hundred fifty people. So oh, yeah, yeah, it's just because the school I went. It's not because of our town. Like our city yeah. has like one of the it has the largest graduating class in North Dakota. Uh, but the school I went to was a small private school, and so there was just I think my brother had the largest graduating class, which was twenty two people. Right. Oh, I, they still talk about that class to this day. <laughs> it's a massive class. I'm just going to let all the goats in the uh, school, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like things. high school. I, there was nothing I really liked about high school. I loved college. I hated high school. Uh, it wasn't what the, just wasn't my thing. I I, I wasn't a, a dork, but uh, I wasn't popular either. I was just kind of uh, because I was funny. Uh, I, you know, I could fit in with anybody, but I just didn't like it. And I didn't even like how the school treats you and stuff like that. I mean, they yeah. had in like the yearbook in the end. It's like here's 20, 20 people to watch out. Well, I'm not on that list. And I tell you what, I'd like to sit down in in, in a room with all twenty of those people, uh, the ones that are still alive and and let's let's compare net worths or or whatever whatever levels of success are let's marriages measure up. i'd like i'd like to measure up to these fuckers that are identified as the the 20 to watch out for and see how they've done in life because the ones that i know about they haven't done too fucking great but my god he's just angry about it i deserve to be on that i'll, list. I'll say uh, like i i'd say that uh freshman and sophomore year sucked in high school um but june well in junior junior year was okay but like senior year was a blah i mean junior and senior year I, to me were were fine in my school but i i did not like seventh eighth ninth tenth grade those were all like really shitty years and like kind of uh -huh. terrible but i don't know if i just kind of stopped giving a shit and so then like things got better when i was a uh, junior right um and i wasn't not i was not popular but i just like didn't care and like i also had gotten arrested once which i don't know if that made me cool or not cool but gave me some street cred because i got arrested <laughs> at 16. street cred and um not that that was a thing like no one had been arrested like that was uh -huh. not a thing in our school like at all right and so like that was kind of a bit i was like oh god people are gonna know about it yeah. so i don't know it's but the public school thing sure yeah yep and not in your small private school yeah yep that was not a thing. i i love i like learning i'll be alive i'm always learning something whatever i'm interested in that but i hate the, the school system yeah. Yeah. yeah i was not a fan of it at all so i was excited to be done with it so yeah well, yeah i made too. the mistake of going to the five-year reunion and i'll never forget <laughs> the five -year that's reunion. not that's really? too soon that's what i too soon learn. Too stupid. Well, no. I mean, I also Some people are still in college, college in five years. They're not even yeah. done. You know, I made the mistake of going to the five year. This will really hit me off because I already had a four year old by then. 
So uh -huh. I just remember the general and I walking in and I saw some people whispering and pointing at me and I said, I'm the fuck out of here. <laughs> Screw all you guys, you could all eat a bag of dicks. Uh, and I was like, that was it. That was it. I was done. And so, but I put all my kids through that high school. So I mean, yeah. I got I got one going in there, starting as a freshman now. So it's like I'm, it's like I'm not around the high school, but hey, if you you're on the need to know basis, you need to know if you if I come across you fine. But I, exactly. I don't need, and, yeah. 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 Five year was a big mistake. Big mistake. Five year. Don't do that. Five year. Don't listen to mm. them. But, but it was was it better than the three year? <laughs> <laughs> The three year was a banger. That was great. Right <laughs> yes. Don't go to your five year with old man. Ten All year, right. twenty years good. Twenty years about 20, right. Twenty years. Because yeah, right, I'm staring at my thirty year high school reunion next year, is, uh, and I'm just looking. I'm like, mm, no, I'm yeah. good. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. usually here to volunteer for something, so put me to work. I'll feel better yeah. about myself then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my mom came in my shop the other day with uh, four ladies that she went to elementary school with, uh, and I'll tell you what. That crew, my God, man! They throw back cool, some liquor. <laughs> oh, no, no, they're just, they're just, they're just. You know, everything I say is confusing. They want to. They're, they're so nice, and they want to have interest in what I'm doing. But then they just don't understand any of it. So it's it's uh, it's funny when they come in. So they did all buy a bottle though. They all like that peanut butter cream. So they all bought a bottle of peanut butter cream. So they are getting lit up this 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 past weekend as we record this. I'm sure. So there you go. On that note, that awesome. yep, it's time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Kathy Cool. I am going to have some Buzzard Druce Char One Rye. Okay. Okay. The homecoming queen of 1988 has the lead. There it is. No. Has the lead. lead. Becca's next. Um, I've got some Larceny here. Okay. Wow, that was explosive. Sloshy, but explosive. Wow, so that was she left, impressive. She left the door open with the sloshy, but uh, it was a very nice cork pop. So she's got the lead. Ryan, you're next. Little Bardstown Bourbon Company Fusion Series. Fusion. 47.75% alcohol by volume. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Nothing. The uh, pop before it. <laughs> no, Tim, Tim, you're next. Becca's no, I'm going to lose this one anyway. So I got a bottle of uh, Papo's birthday barrel, sweet thumped rye. Nice. From our friends at Neely Family Distillery. Can you see the squeak? Yeah. Ooh, wow. wow. Over three tonight. Explosive. Explosive. <laughs> uh, I've got some bare knuckle here. Becca has the lead. Nah. Nah. It was, again, nice, but. Uh, I don't know, maybe third place. It or might so. be that microphone back because her microphone is quite impressive. Oh, there and you go. I think that might I have hear that often. I'm yeah. sure you do. Cheers, gang. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, everyone. Cheers. All right, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about the Bourbon County Stout lineup for 2024. We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Speaking of executive bourbon steward certification, the ABV Barrel Shop in St. Louis, Missouri has developed a unique partnership with the Stave and Thief Society to offer a preparatory class to assist you in getting your executive bourbon steward certification. This prep class costs only $25 and is available to take live or online via Zoom. Graduates of our class receive a coupon code good for 15% off your executive bourbon steward certification held in Louisville, Kentucky. This saves you almost $90. Additionally, you can collaborate with fellow attendees to split travel costs when you go to Louisville. If you're interested in signing up for the class, simply head over to abvbarrelshop.com and check out the classes and events page. 
Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller in one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at neelyfamilydistillery.com. And now, back to the show. This is Katie Proof, and you're listening to the Bourbon Daily. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're talking about the Bourbon County Stout lineup. Yes, we are. Let's go to Kathy. Uh, Kathy, what does the Stout lineup look like for this year? Well, we have an original Stout. Okay, that's the classic. Always got to have that. A vanilla rye Stout. I'm interested in that one. I do that like that. Sounds vanilla. yummy. Now that uh, that sounds like that may be a winner there. A macaroon stout could be good, could be good, could be bad. Uh, that's that's, yep. that's 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 a questionable one. You, you gotta take it try a risk. It. Try before you buy, maybe. Proprietor's barley wine. Barley wine. Yeah, I'm that's just. One either so they get right or they don't. don't. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And then we round out with the Bardstown cask finish stout. Well, that's going to be a good one, I would think too. So yeah, yeah. So there you go. Five in the lineup this year. It's down from previous years for sure. Mm -hmm. So not as, not as much as they've had in years past. Um, I, it, it, they definitely need to rework something. I, I mean, that was such an exciting thing for so many years and build up and, you know, the last couple of years when you can buy it, you know, six months later and they still, they got to the point where the, yes. the regular would just be on the shelves. Then, then they had the variants or on the shelves and available. Then they even had the rare variants, like the last couple of years you could buy months yep. after the fact. So it's just too much. They pumped up too much. So hopefully they're going to rework it and maybe get some of their old mojo back. I hope. I'm I'm you, this vanilla rice stout caught my eye when I first saw this list. That <laughs> yeah. that sounds freaking delicious. I know that's that yeah. seems to be a good combo for sure. Totally. Yeah. We need to get so. some tenth mountain barrels over to uh, to uh, Goose Island. Get them in the right hands. Huh? Get them in the right, right? hands. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, what were you going to say though about? Uh, I'm with you. They've lost their mojo. I mean, for the last two years, I can get the whole entire thing without even worrying about it. Yeah. I put my name on the lottery at the local store here. I get it. Like, hey, congratulations! I'm like, ah, oh, no shit. <laughs> so two, three years in a row now, I've been able to get everything without a problem. And, and not that I sit out for it. If I right. get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. But yeah, you're, I still see stuff on the shelf from hey, going back four years now. Yeah, I even see some 2020 stuff sitting out there. I'll tell you what, I, uh, and again, you may say this sounds bogus, but I'll tell you what, these are good times. Uh, uh, you know, we used to go s sit in line starting at like four o'clock in the morning. It would be me, Danny, and the legend. And, and I tell you what, you can't replace the times that we had sitting out at night, yeah. uh, the day after it's cold, you know, crazy cold all, every year. Uh, it, it just, uh, you know, those, and I wouldn't want to do it again. I, I don't want to go sit in line for stuff. I, so I, I'd be out on that, but it just shows you how desirable it was. And, and I don't know, it was special. Those those things those sitting in line up there, you know, bundled up, talking with those clowns, and then whoever random was there. Beer people. One thing that's kind of cool about beer people versus bourbon, they always bring beer, and it's you know, <laughs> a good. They point. always have beer. I, you know, you're, you're sitting in line. They are, they're all bringing beer and pouring it, so you get to. So no one no one's bringing bottles of bourbon, at least in the ones that I went to. Um, and hell, you'd probably get in trouble if you tried to do that. So beer seems to be played by different rules than, uh, you know, distilled spirits. So, so yeah, never gotten any trouble for that. People set up a table and have beers out there. And yeah, that's crazy. But. So I hate to say this, but, oh, sorry, Kathy, you go ahead. I was just going to ask, do they still taste as good as they have in years past? Yes. Yeah, I, th I think that uh, the taste is still there. And as a matter of fact, they've gotten creative. They got some really cool ones. And I bought a couple here and there. I mean, like I said, I haven't done the sit in line thing for years, but um, 
I, you know, because they're readily available, I'll pick up one or two and, and taste them. I really like them still. I mean, I think they're good, but now I just, I used to buy and then hoard and save and drink over time. Now I just buy what I'm going to consume in the next week. You know, I'm, I'll buy a bottle and be like, oh, I'm drinking that next weekend. So, yeah. They had that skunky year and they think they figured out the quality assurance. So they, they were put on, put on blast for a little bit there. Was oh, that 2019 yeah. maybe? Uh, I think earlier than it's that, going yeah. back a little bit. Yeah, it's going. It is going back a little bit. So. Yeah, I mean, they had the, but they, I mean, the quality of the of the product, I think, is still there. It's yeah. just a matter of the flavors. I don't think they've ever recovered from that um, that s'mores proprietor blend that they had. I want to say it was 2017. Uh huh. That was just s'mores in a glass. It was outstanding. And then it's like the proprietor's blends, but they did like a jalapeno something chocolate thing before that was just like. Eh. Uh, right. so I get the benefit of being able to get that proprietor's uh, option up here in Chicago because it's more local. Yeah, uh, it's it's either hit or miss. When I see the barley wines, I'm like, ugh. Yeah. yeah. I always thought one of the potentially coolest things, and we we need to get to Becca here. I know she had something she wanted to say there, but I always thought one of the coolest things that if you're a bourbon fan uh would be or if you're a beer fan uh would be the day when they they have like it's a little internal contest they have where uh, a bunch of people do brew things and stuff like that and they submit their ideas for what ultimately becomes part of in this example the 2024 lineup i would love to to be the day when they're doing that to, to taste those things and see the experiments that were had and to see the reaction to them like oh that one didn't work and we we'll, won't do that this one's good i i feel like we could refine it maybe let's re visit it next year versus this one's a green light we're doing this one now i think that would be so fun to be a part of that i think that would be kind of a very very cool thing Agreed. sorry becca uh oh you're good yeah um i've been on this particular show um i think every year since i've started doing this with you Steve. yeah because i've always been a fan of this stuff yeah yeah um and i've been on this re this recording day i think every single time for the past mm -hmm. I don't know, six or seven years however many years it's been um and i have to say i'm a little bit disappointed with the release lineup like it doesn't look as exciting as it has in years before I where know. they've had and and it it could just be you know they've had really exciting names for stuff in years past which i think does get people excited when they have like fun funky names for stuff yep yeah um and i just don't feel like this um is as exciting of a reading lineup now that they might be some of the best ones they've ever put out but just the uh i don't know say they're they're not as exciting as they've been in years past yeah no razzle dazzle yeah they they usually put some razzle dazzle into them and and the most exciting name of these is uh i don't know maybe like really none of them are exciting names no no. I, unfortunately, like I, it, but and like for literally, like there's been so many where it's like you're re like Della is de generally on this with us, and we're like reading them off, and it's like some crazy long name of, and it's like what the hell is that gonna be? That sounds super crazy and interesting, and it, I feel like that amps people up more when it's like, oh my god, what is that one gonna right. do? Right. Yeah. We well, kind of had it where it was a, a thing for years too, uh, ABV network thing where we'd all go out and say what we got. The, you know, it'd be Tim and me, mm -hmm. and the Robinsons even would go out and Tony Friend, and you know, there'd be a lot of people weighing in on uh, you know what they what they found out there. And uh, yeah, it's just not not the same uh, now. So yeah, how so, wide is it distributed? Uh, it's across the U.S. So yeah, is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So yes. So you can pretty much get it uh, anywhere that I know of. I, I mean, I see people get it in California. And, uh, and it wasn't it always. And, yeah, yeah. No. For a while, it was kind of all the really cool releases were kind of like more centralized, oh, yeah. obviously, right. for a while. And it was Steve was like, oh, man, I hope you guys get a bottle of this one. That one's going to be awesome. Right. right. Yeah. So. But now yeah. it's kind of when stuff gets too widely out there then it's also gets just not as exciting. takes away the magic of it for sure yeah. so but i am going to try this damn vanilla rye one that one i'm going to try i may i may take a splurge on the macaroon one too so I just like sounds, so if they've got the flavor right if Steve, they get it right yeah yeah that could be really so that could be really really enjoyable um yeah. or it could taste that's like, what, it's like that's <laughs> yeah. what i rolled the dice on right right yeah 
but it'll be worth trying. So I will see. So there you go. That's just a very early preview. Again, uh, it's coming out the same time it always has. So you're going to wait till after Thanksgiving. So, but uh, for right now, that's, uh, that's what you should be thinking about. So that's what's going to be out there. So there you go. Well, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Kathy, we're going to start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram, KK Cast Strength. Tim. Find me on Instagram at SwyGuy2112 and YouTube at our flagship whiskey. Ryan. Across all socials at 10th MTN Whiskey and our website's 10th Whiskey.com. That's 10th Whiskey with an E. Miss Becca Sue. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue, 1K, no C's. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see me, the ABV Barrel Shop. We've always got some cool things going on. Maybe it's an event. Maybe it's somebody coming in from out of town. Maybe we're just getting a very uh, great uh, barrel pick in. You just never know what's happening. Sometimes we don't even know what's happening. So just come in and learn with us as we go. So check us out online, abvbarrelshop.com. Miss Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, Wes, you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. Farnance, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya! Bye! Bye! Bye. Peace! Before we let you go, let's talk about one last thing. The ABV Barrel Shop in the St. Louis community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on a couple of things. First of all, single barrels. We are the place where single barrels live. We go to distilleries, taste through the whiskey, select the best barrel, and have it shipped to our store where we present it to you, our customers, by allowing you to try before you buy. We're also known for the classes that we have in our education center in the store, as well as the events we have with industry professionals from the bourbon business. If you are in the St. Louis area, please come by and visit us at 6 Fox Valley Center in Arnold, Missouri. Or at a minimum, at least sign up for our email and text distribution so you know exactly what's going on in our shop over at abvbarrelshop.com. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.